Good afternoon, everyone. My name is Jonathan Crable. I'm an associate professor at Columbus State Community College in the Business Programs Department. And today it is our honor to introduce a new leadership series with one of our partners, the Ohio Minority Supplier Development Council. This is a statewide organization that has over 300 MBEs as members and partners and wanted to introduce this leadership series focusing on diversity, equity, and inclusion. Uh, but with these interviews, we're gonna be talking about leadership with some of the entrepreneurs, CEOs, founders of these 300 plus MBEs. Today, we will be talking with CEO and founder of New Concepts Incorporated out of Cleveland, Ohio, Sadarshan Asahi. Uh, enjoy this conversation between Roger Ball, a uh, faculty member at Columbus State, and Sudarshan Sahi. MBA, and I did MBA. So okay. that's my educational background. Okay, super, awesome. You know, this is going to be an interesting conversation from the standpoint that traditionally engineers are not necessarily the ones that you see as entrepreneurs, which you have successfully made that transition. So now, uh, 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 Sadarshan, can you talk to us about new concepts? What is it that you guys do? Okay, so uh, this is a very good question, Roger. Uh, in June of 1990, I uh, became the proud citizen of United States. And um, in Columbus, Ohio, at the federal courthouse in Columbus, Ohio, I took my uh, oath of citizenship. And I always wanted to start my business and do business, uh, be an entrepreneur, but I had no idea about what. So I, I went from my uh, oath taking to the Secretary of State's office on Broad Street and said, I want to start a business. And they said, okay, easy enough. Here is a three page form uh, and we need a check for $75 and you will have your business. And I said, wow, what a, what a great country that you can just do that. And, and uh, I hand wrote my application and it's on Secretary of State's website even today. And I filled out all the information, but I got stuck with purpose of business. And I said, wow, I don't know the purpose of business. What am I going to write? So I quickly called a friend who had started a company and I said, I don't know what I'm going to do this business about. So what should I do? And he said, well, just write any lawful activity. <laughs> and that kind of covers everything. So, uh, so I said, uh, any, uh, uh, any activity well, lawfully permitted in the state of Ohio or something like that I wrote. Um, and so I had the company, but I had the idea that uh, I did not want a me to business. Uh, I wanted to innovate. I wanted to uh, make something uh, that was not on the market uh, because uh, by that time I had uh, a couple of patents in one technology uh, of agglomeration where you take fine particles and, and, and compact them like how charcoal fines are made into charcoal briquettes that we use uh, uh, on 4th of July and, and other times. So, uh, so I always had this idea that I wanted to make something new. Um, and that's where I came up with the name New Concepts because I wanted to ha have some new ideas. And I also know that the human race, uh, which uh, we all know, uh, you know, originates from Africa, and then around 100,000 years ago, it, it, it started to travel to the Indian subcontinent. And around 40,000 years ago, 
there is a distinct change in human behavior uh, because still that time the humans are behaving like animals in pure competition for food, in pure competition for mates. Uh, but around 40,000 years ago, we made a distinct change in human behavior where humanity learned two new things. First is the ability to cooperate because competitiveness is common to all human beings even today, but human beings have learned to keep that competitiveness uh, aside for a moment uh, and cooperate because that's how you make progress. And because human beings cooperate and animals don't cooperate, uh, a powerful tiger is in the cage and we are standing outside the cage. So I, I knew the power of cooperation. And, and the second thing was innovation. So 40,000 years ago is when we see some change in the raw material to making a small pot or making a wheel or taking a, a weapon. So I, I just had this idea that cooperation and innovation are the two engines to take the humanity forward. So I had that idea and that's how I came up with the name, uh, new concepts um, without knowing what I was going to do. Okay, so as you look at your business, how many different products have you developed or would you say that's out in the marketplace? Okay, right. So uh, one of the things that uh, I want all the participants to know that the path of success is a meandering one. Um, maybe uh, there are some very, very fortunate people who have one idea and that just, uh, they hit it out of the park with it. But if you look at Edison who wanted to uh, make a light bulb and he needed a filament. And for that filament, he tried uh, over a thousand different materials in, including uh, you know horses hair. Um, but uh, finally he got the right uh, material in tungsten, and uh, and and that's how he uh, uh, did this. So uh, so in the agglomeration space, I have I have two patterns where using minimal binder, uh, you can make fine particles into a, a solid block. Uh, and the second pattern, uh, second uh, class of patent I have is a product that makes aluminum, silicon, manganese uh, into one product. And that is being used in the country and, the, uh, and, and this alcimin, uh, it's called alcimin for A-L-S-I-M-N. And, and this alcimin product is used in steel making. Okay, all right, super. So when you think about your geographical footprint, would you consider it to be local, regional, national, international, or multinational? So I, I am uh, involved in a commodity called aluminum. And there is a particular kind of aluminum product. It is called deoxidation aluminum or deox aluminum for short. Uh, that is needed in every steel mill. Every steel mill in the, in the world needs this kind of aluminum uh, to scavenge the oxygen that is there in their melt product. And they have to uh, uh, scavenge it out very quickly. And aluminum does this very efficiently. But the, this market is very freight sensitive because the uh, barriers to entry in this market are low. So uh, you are not going to have someone in Germany uh, importing this product from uh, United States uh, and paying 10 cents freight when they can build a little plant right next to their steel mill and where they have to pay one cent freight. So, so if, for the reasons of freight, 
uh, its its geographical sweep is limited, but I uh, sell this product uh, all over United States and Canada um, because I work with many plants that are uh, throughout the steel mill region. I mean, steel mill region, uh, when you think of steel mill region, you think about Pittsburgh to Cleveland to Detroit, uh, down south, Birmingham has a big, uh, in Alabama and Arkansas have big steel uh, uh, concentration. And, um, and, and, and one of the reasons that uh, being in Cleveland is such an advantage in the steel industry is that in Cleveland, uh, you not only have local steel making, but you are at the geographical center of gravity of steel making. Because from Cleveland, you are pretty much within a one hour or one hour, 15 minute flight to almost all the steel making centers in US and Canada. Of course, Canada, you can fly to Toronto from Cleveland uh, in 30 minutes. Um, but and, and drive in about five hours. So, okay, all right, super. So, so Dasha, what you know? One of the things that we discuss in several of our classes is leadership, okay? and you know, leadership from a corporate standpoint, an entrepreneurial standpoint. You know, how do you go about training? in teaching leadership within your organization. How many, how many folks are in your organization now, your company? I have four people in my organization. Okay. I have a, a small footprint that way, but I work with a large number of companies who, that make my product to my specification and ship to my destination. So I, I would say that I nominally may be a small company, but in fact, I have a large number of employees involved in this effort. Mm -hmm. And mm -hmm. uh, the, the question of leadership is, uh, is very, very uh, good question, Roger, because uh, you always ask yourself, uh, does some higher power uh, make uh, some anoint a leader? And uh, the that is not the case. The case, is the, the, the real leadership floats to the top from the, as if the cream floats to the top. So why does someone become a leader? So if we can think about uh, a, we are just playing, just kids in a neighborhood playing football. Who are we going to agree? Because remember that all the uh, players who are playing football have natural competitiveness in them. Uh, perhaps they all want to be a leader, but they are able to settle on someone among them as the leader. And why do they do that? Because there is someone who has the qualities of body, thought, and mind that everyone agrees are superior. So uh, maybe uh, we uh, have among us an individual who just is a fantastic quarterback and uh, very nice to talk to, very nice to deal with, always building people up. Nobody has made him a leader. Nobody has given him the title. Nobody has given him the higher salary. This is just friends, you know, hanging mm -hmm. around and playing football. But one of them, everybody agrees that, hey, this person has something that is special. Let, okay. let us follow him. Okay. So, uh, uh, you know, there, there, there is a uh, uh, wonderful saying that uh, he who knows not and knows not, he knows not, is a fool, avoid him. He who knows, but knows not, he knows, is sleeping, awaken him. He who knows not, but knows he knows not, is simple, you can teach him. 
and he who knows and knows that he knows is a wise man and follow him. So in any group, there are some natural people who know and who have the confidence of knowing that they know, they become the leaders. Leaders float to the top. So whether we think of George Washington, I mean, if you look at the, uh, the, 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 the leaders at the time of independence, I mean, you have Benjamin Franklin and you have Hamilton. I mean, you, you have all these smart people. But even among them, they somehow feel that, wow, this George Washington, he's a special guy. You know, we, we need to follow him. And uh, in the civil rights movement, I mean, you, you, you hear, you, you know, maybe Martin Luther King Jr. Was, was just an unknown person, you know, really. But as people heard, uh, they say, wow, you know, listen to this guy. Listen to how he's able to speak and create a, a turn of phrase and, 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 and how he... Uh, I mean, the, 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 the wording, I mean, I, I am a great lover of English language and I read Martin Luther King sometimes just for the beautiful English, you know, um, arc of the universe is long, but it bends toward justice. I mean, who, who comes up with a <laughs> line like that, you know, yeah. uh, and, 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 and so uh, Mahatma Gandhi, I mean, he's a three piece wearing lawyer, uh, English, uh, England trained lawyer, but uh, he becomes the leader. So the thing to remember about leadership is make yourself into the best version of yourself, best habits, warm and gracious communication to others, and you will attract a following. Leaders attract the following. Okay. Leaders know uh, the following that nobody ap applies to be the leader. Okay. The leader floats to the top. Right. So, all right. So what I'd like to do. I'm know, sorry. Kind of, I I'm had sorry? a question regarding leadership. Yeah. Okay. Um, I just wanted to know, in your personal opinion, do you think these leaders are self-aware of these traits and aware that, you know, they hold this standard? Um, you know, even before they're a lawyer and leader or after they're a leader? Yeah, I mean, uh, again, it's a matter of age. I mean, uh, you know, at a very young age, uh, they may not be aware of their specialness, but but definitely as they, uh, as they uh, grow up, they definitely realize uh, that they have this talent or ability or innate leadership quality. So I want you to uh, make a distinction between being aware and being self-conscious. So the best leaders are not self-conscious. They're not beating their chest like, I am the leader, I am the leader, I am the leader, I am the best, I am this. I, I mean, we, 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 we have um, uh, some leaders who are always saying, uh, I am the best, beautiful, you know, you heard the line, mirror, mirror on the wall, who is fairest of them all? You know, I am fairest of them all. So that is self-consciousness. And, and good leaders uh, do, are not self-conscious. They're not always bragging or this or that, but they have the quiet confidence that comes from the awareness that people look up to them, people are looking for uh, uh, some guidance and they can give it. And so did I uh, answer your question? Um, Kim might have, uh, oh, okay. Thanks, Kim. Yeah, thank you. That was a great answer. And, thank you. And, uh, uh, the, you know, this is, this is a great conversation. This is, this is enlightening. I really appreciate this. You know, uh, again, I want to be respectful of your time. We've only got a few minutes left. What I'd like to do, staying, you know, kind of on that same path with respect to leadership and these things that um, uh, uh, individuals need to do in order to be a leader. I want to do a, a lightning round of words. I'm going to say a word, and I'd like for you to really kind of associate that to leadership. Okay. So when 
when you think about gratitude, how does that relate to leadership to you? Okay, so the, the word, so the gratitude has three parts, feeling gratitude, feeling grateful, expressing gratitude, and expressing it to the person that you are grateful to. So in order to get 100 points on the gratitude test, you must tell the person that you are grateful to that you are grateful in very clear and simple language. And what that does is the uh, once gratitude is such a powerful thing that once you start to use this tool in this real world, that, that people, the help comes to you, the people are ready to help you, people are ready to work with you because people feel validated that they gave some help and there you are acknowledging it privately or sometimes publicly. Okay, awesome. Visualization. How does that relate to? Okay, how do you see visualization that is a, an extremely powerful tool. Uh, you have heard that uh, uh, basketball players visualize that the ball is going through the hoop when they make the free just before they make the free throw, and the, there is a universe. Uh, the, the thing visualization is relates to how the universe works, and the thing to remember is the universe of the next moment, the universe of the next moment hasn't happened yet. Universe of the next moment hasn't happened yet. And you have a say in what that universe is going to be. You have a, your willpower is at the table about the universe of next moment or the next year or the next month. So if you visualize yourself, and, and let's take a, uh, take a simple example that um, you wish to drive a Mercedes car and you are currently not driving a Mercedes car. But if you visualize the ornament on your hood to be a Mercedes TriStar and you visualize intensely the uni you have a say that the universe of the next moment will be such that you will actually have that car with a TriStar. So visualization leads to actualization. Visualization mm. is the tool for actualization. And if you, and, and what happens is most people uh, never ask themselves, what is it that I want? Most people, if you ask them, what do you want? I don't think they can give a coherent answer. They have not even thought about this. Yeah. So first you have to think about what you want. You have to sharpen it so that you can write it in a single sentence on a piece of paper. Figure out what you want, sharpen that in, into a sentence that you can write on a piece of paper and visualize that that has already been achieved. Okay. Awesome. Awesome. All right. We got one minute left and I need you to, it's a very important point. Let's talk about attributes. If you could just sum up for us to kind of bring this, this, uh, uh, this circle to a close, what attributes would you say you have, Sir Dashian, that has allowed you to be successful at the top of the pyramid in your particular industry? Okay, so the attribute that I am aware of and I can share is I have empathy. And by that I mean that if, if, if I am in a room with Roger, you, you Roger, I would have an understanding of how you feel, what is important to you, what value or performance is, 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 is something that you would appreciate or, or value. And, and it is as if I, if I know that, then I can deliver it. And I have the habit of working hard to deliver. Uh, I, I just give you a quick example for shortage of time. 
the most beautiful sound in the world is the sound of your name. And uh, that is because we need validation in this world. And when someone says Roger, then that person is validated. And this happens at a subconscious level. I mean, you're not thinking about this. But if we have a meeting and uh, I don't know Roger, but he's uh, sitting, um, uh, say, five people down from me. And, and I say, uh, I agree with Roger. Or like Roger said, uh, I think we should do that. I, ha I have instantly made an ally in the room because now Roger and I have an emotional connection because I took his name, I validated his idea, I acknowledged that his idea was uh, valuable. Oh man, awesome, awesome. Uh, Sir Dashian, we, I certainly uh, appreciate your time today. It's very valuable. You have left us with a number of nuggets in which we can use and put uh, as part of our existing tool uh, belt in order to help us all to be successful. I appreciate the students that have come on. We're going to put this out for uh, everyone to come out and, and view. And I'd like to once again say thank you for being our inaugural uh, guest for the leadership series at Columbus State Community College Business Programs Department and the Ohio Minority Supplier Development Council's uh, Certified Minority Business Enterprises. Thank you so much. Have a super day. All the best.